Oh boy, yet another fun thing for, for this lovely Monday afternoon as I get myself functional. Still reading through that last book in the Omnibus so I can put up my review for later. And also uh, writing because I want to put out another issue later. You know, got to keep ahead of the game. But more of the stuff has turned up from the writing sphere of uh, the back and forth on Twitter. But what I key in on now versus what I did when I was a whale reader. Because right now with writing, yeah, the overabundance of reading isn't happening as much anymore. Which is why I usually save most of that either for a little bit on days off or on Sundays, basically. So here we go. The big question. Or rather one of like three questions, I suppose. But uh, Mr. Henry does state, serious question for book buyers. Most indie author book ads include the line, if you like, uh, you know, this particular author and this particular writer, you'll love my books. Does that ever make you take a closer look at the author's books? Back when I was a whale reader, that was kind of a lighthouse in some ways. Uh, like say at the time if I was heavily reading into say a bunch of David Weber stuff if somebody adds with their military sci-fi thing like oh this is you know in the vein of David Weber or something I'd probably take a look see but nowadays I, I, I'm looking for different things than I did when I was a whale reader when I was a whale reader I just wanted the like the next hit of whatever series was going on if it had enough um, trope flavors I enjoyed or enough themes that I could enjoy or overlap with, then I picked it up and, you know, gave it a, gave it a whirl. It, but nowadays, with especially with what I'm writing, I am looking for stuff that's, you know, more uplifting than not. Um, a lot of uh, stuff is still very much in the car cathartic motivational setup, which, you know what, yeah, Professor Geek d does break that down pretty easily. At least, you know, for me, a majority of readers, from the looks of it, they do want to go in and they'll key in with a character that's like automatically the underdog, which I can show the comparison here. Because, you know, while various writers have different methods of doing stuff, there are some common things that are selling like gangbusters right now even on you know the Amazons and around everywhere else but today the uh, Mr. Joshua and the Brothamus here uh, Mr. Adam Lane Smith released um, a kind of lit RPG steampunk mashup and the just to pay attention to the overall blurb you know, to tear down the system, he's got to level up. Condemned by the media circus of, of the People's Republic of California court, Donnie is plunged into a deadly game as entertainment for the brutalized masses. Uh, tormented over failing his father, Donnie realizes honor hangs in the balance. His family's fate lies in his hands. Donnie must battle through a cutthroat digital world to free thousands of political prisoners and bring down the corrupt system. But the future's most ruthless killers stand in his way. Can Donnie, Donnie's wits and unbreakable spirit get him out alive? So, the, like, the blurb pretty much tells me, like, okay, automatically this character is the ultimate underdog. He's getting handed a shit sandwich on express lane to unfortunate events. And, um... It doesn't really need much more explaining that, but then, like what Mr. Uh, Henry's talking about at the bottom, it, it the blurb states for fan for fans of Ready Player One and Sword Art Online will love Level Up or Die, the new first-person lit RPG adventure from number one best-selling authors Joshua Lisek and Adam Lane Smith. Read it today. So they're taking th that part at the bottom is the cue to. Not not really like the wheelhouse genre reader, but for whale readers, people who want that next, you know, oh, this is like this or this is like, you know, A, B or C. They're looking for their next fix. So they're they're trying to appeal to people who just like straight and to the point 
you know, blurbs, like what was above. And they're also trying to bring in the whale readers who are like, I want more of stuff in this kind of vein. But whale readers, even I was guilty of this, we don't really pay attention to the overall themes as much as like, okay, this is supposed, this is supposed to be giving me another hit that's like this like particular uh, franchise filled with these kind of particular tropes. There's an assumption that there will be some sort of overlap with what you want inside. And, and for me, yeah, like current me is like what I really want to know. Will this book have themes that are more uplifting rather than down in the dirt, you know, uh, humanity sucks expanse level, you know. Again, that's the reason why I've kind of veered away from stuff like Berserk. I know people love it, but it's just like there's only so much I personally can take right now with my own personal preferences to it when it comes to that arena. Because again, the cathartic motivational seems to be king right now, but you got to remember you got to have the aspirational to go along with it. Otherwise, the cathartic is, is just like a, a one-man band where it's playing by itself in a vacuum. But again, that's that's all just my opinion. And this whole setup right now is just how I'm reacting to things and how I used to react to things versus now. Um, when it comes, is say like if I'm reading military sci-fi, I want the overall ending to have you know rebirth, hope. You know, I want it to end on a positive note. And even though, say, a lot of bad things happen in Harrington or happen in Ember War, it will still, there's still aspects where it ends on a positive note. And then you get to some of the side series where then a new conflict arises and that sort of thing. But a lot of people are also building those kinds of series for the whale readers. Even Galaxy's Edge, it is built for the whale reader. Now, it, it does cater to people who want that particular genre trope mashup wheelhouse too. But a lot of the people that sell the bigger amounts on Amazon, they pretty much uh, kind of like edge on the side of um, the whale reader. So that way they can try to get more eyeballs on their book if that particular person hasn't picked up something from them before. They they want some sort of like franchise recognition from something else to like catapult that book to bigger sales. A lot of the lit RPG stuff is doing this as well. Uh, it's the reason why they got so many of the lit RPG guys comparing themselves to like, oh, this is like a knockoff of Shield Hero. You know, whatever's the the biggest thing in that particular you know maze of wheelhouse will usually get like this is just like x y or z but yeah again nowadays i want to see like okay what is the overall theme will this have like like a more superversive kind of tint to it that's mainly what you know modern me wants uh it it's like a uh, hmm how to set up like this. Hmm. Whale readers are just constantly on the move. They they want the next kind of big series to gobble up, you know, because most of them are series readers. They they want those uh, three to twelve book, you know, mega busters. Because a lot of them also, you know, fairly fairly often speed read stuff too. They just want to be on like kind of like that endless merry-go-round of like, okay, where's my next hit coming from? It almost sounds like they're uh, a bit drugged, but they're just, they're just hooked on, you know, like get book, read book, get next book, get next book, you know, and, and it's particularly if it's a series, it's like boom, 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 you know, keep going. And even Mr. DJ adds in, yeah, this is the sort of thing we're trying to debate about in terms of like, what do you add to the blurb? You know, at least I know Ready Player One, but I don't know who wrote it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll remember who writes some of the, you know, bigger splashes and say the um, whole media zeitgeist and whatnot. But yeah, if you try to hook your your book up for whale readers, you will have to look into like, okay, what is the top thing that sold to the masses that a whale reader's like, oh, 
I might not have read that, but I know the name recognition. Well, again, not everybody's read Harrington, but it has name recognition in most, you know, military sci-fi circles. People know that's like that's one of the granddaddies of that particular setup. <sighs> and even I started reading that back in like the mid 90s like I read the first book when I was like 12 or 13 granted I didn't understand all the aspects of it when I first read it but yeah no I've been been around that stuff for a while so sometimes they do that to again to, to put the lighthouse on the whale readers like hey guys here's this big old property and you want your next fix well here we're gonna be the next big property you know they're, they're trying to set it up to where it it's like kind of like skipping stones where it'll just keep reverberating out and more and more eyeballs will get on it like again you you might not get everybody but the more people you can canvas you know that, that's what a lot of this stuff is trying to bring in and even mr yakov's asking does you know know if, if anybody you know getting the the number one new release tag on amazon actually helps whether on day one or beyond I would say it does help in in a way where it the their their darn algorithm as much as it's messed up will actively promote you know the stuff with the orange tags you'll get more of it in their passive feed if you don't have their ads blocked because again I, I I looked at it from a blocked you know perspective where I have my ad blocker up and then I went on to another browser and I didn't block anything and yeah you definitely get a lot more ads based on what you've bought before which in turn sometimes can have that cycle of your book will be stuck in a, like kind of like the ghetto of a particular wheelhouse you know because uh, even I see that when I'm surfing in or out of my uh, account just to because again, all of this stuff is kind of like been an experiment to see like how does this work and how can you catapult things. But yeah, getting that orange tag, that's the reason why there is so much abuse with it. Because the system will actively promote that book in some way. So that's the reason why we've all had to get a little bit creative, you know, have different kinds of web rings, websites to try to springboard people. Because you know when it comes to social media half the time people won't springboard stuff other than like some big time drama because the drama gets you know the more instant clicks that's the reason why even with my channel you know it's been pretty slow growth because I in the majority I try to talk about like like what I'm doing on my writing journey reviewing some stuff I've enjoyed uh, trying to lift up other wheelhouses that aren't really you know paid attention to here so even if it's outside my personal preference or wheelhouse I'll still you know give stuff a look-see just to see what's going on in uh, other parts of the indie sphere and even with a f handful of traditionally published books even if that doesn't happen as often but the, yeah there's so much stuff to th to this whole thing it, it's can be mind-boggling sometimes so that so that's the reason why I try to tackle it like one sector at a time to try to see like okay if like what works for me because again like the, you're you can look into what your personal preferences are and say like okay what do you want out of a blurb what catches your eye on a blurb and then if you see enough of a pattern you can implement it in your own blurbs and yeah they're even talking about like how to put stuff in different tags you know even if it's only peripherally attached to what that book's about honestly the lit rpg people put their books into every single category that has anything to do with gaming whatsoever whether it's board games mystery games you know clue games they'll they'll put it in uh, whichever category but that also comes back to the fact that Amazon doesn't really expand its categories as much if I was them since lit RPG is so big I would have created a lit RPG exclusive tag and then make a bunch of sub tags for that based on what kind of wheelhouses lit RPG likes because with the lit RPG thing I've noticed there's like base building stuff there's du what they call dungeon core stuff there's the people stuck in MMOs stuff you know there's wuxia stuff with it 
uh, yeah, there's a couple other things. There's even the, the semi isekai versions of things, but, um, and if I'm mispronouncing things, like, oh well, that's what Florida Woman does on a daily basis. But, uh, it, yeah, the, like, the tag system, I don't think it'll ever be rearranged by Amazon, because that's not Amazon's main focus. It, I, I'm really beginning to think it's just a way for them to see what kind of buying algorithms they can guess up for other categories of stuff besides books. And yeah, that doesn't really help us readers much, or uh, or other writers, but that's the reason why I'm beginning to think you're going to have to go what uh, and do what uh, Silver Empire did and kind of create like a sub-listing you know, on your own site and like, here's my stuff. Uh, here's the particular tags or like genre wheelhouses I would use on it and go from there. It's really all about even building up a kind of a brand. I mean, even with what I'm doing with Upload Protocol, it's like that, that's what I want to build up. Like, will I write other things eventually? Yes. Uh, but uh, unlike that meme where it shows like, oh, new idea, promote it. Oh, original idea, ignore it and keep promoting new ideas it's like no like I I'm being stubborn it's like no I'm gonna stick with this series until I'm done yeah because again as a reader nowadays th that's what I appreciate seeing like okay yeah yeah you did your wham bam thank you ma'am and you got your series done all right nice you didn't end it on like a a, a um, tripped up note you know again if you want to see example of how not to write a whole series even though it's a different medium mass effect it's like if you have you just need the basic trunk of the main narrative to go through the whole setup right so that way while you're pr even programming games or writing comics doesn't matter what medium it is as long as you have that main thread going through everything you're doing you can build up to whatever ending you want I guess if you want to say the whole tier deal, deer of this is um, whale readers have different kind of um, uh, buzzwords that they key in on versus say if you're looking for a specific kind of uh, wheelhouse setup where you want certain things or themes or even tropes from books. Whale readers are built to just keep going and going kind of like the energizer bunny it's like which is the next in the series i gotta keep going oh how does this end i gotta read till the end you know and then in some cases sometimes depending on whether or not the speed factor of the releases also affect the whale reader like most of them if you're not outputting something in that series at least one every month they'll eventually lose interest and catch on to somebody else who's producing it faster and ending the series even sooner you know in a weird way it, some of them prefer the pulp speed of uh, uh, series releases where yeah minimum one book per month uh, you're doing gangbusters if you get two in per month which is I think the reason why so many indie writers are doing you know co-author team-ups too because they're trying to keep up with the demand of that whale reader how about you guys have a good day